I've titled this The One, and we're going to honor him and God's word and get ready to close out 2019 and go into 2020 with a uh, different look on it. But before we go anywhere, we're going to turn over to Genesis 1-1, and I'm going to pray. Father, thank you for your anointed word that enters our ears and goes to our heart, Lord, whatever the need may be, be it pain, be it joy, need, Lord, that you'll just manifest yourself here today. You'll have your experience be encountered by all of us here. Jesus, thank you for what you've done, the things you're doing, and the things to come from you. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you and we welcome you here in this presence at this time. In Jesus' name, and everybody said? Amen. Amen. All right, so the one in the beginning. Who here has schedules and calendars set for next year? All right. Two years, three years, four years, five years out. Anybody got an extended plan? Jesus has an extended plan. The minute you receive him, your days will be forever with him. Hallelujah. But meanwhile, back here, as we begin, what do we do with our day as it begins? Genesis 1-1. Everybody's focusing on January 1, right? A new beginning. And let me remind you that something has to end at times before something new can begin. Can we be in agreement on that? Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Why do we begin here? Because that's our creator. He created the heavens and the earth. He separated out the darkness with light and called it days. As in the song, I love that. He hovered over the waters and stirred them. He spoke into life, breathed into dust and created us in his image, male and female. He created in his image. Why? to have a relationship with us. God's not about religion, he's about relationship. He's a relational God and that's why he created this and he created this with a purpose and a hope. Revelation 1.8, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. As the Almighty one, God's power is op- it's absolute. It's absolute. It's omnipotent. He is all things. And as he created man, as we all know, Adam sinned while he was in the Garden of Eden. And there's a consequence for our sins. And that's death. And that's separation from God. But God had a plan all along. He knew that day was going to come. But through his love and because of a relationship and all things that are evil, God always sends something good to trumpet. Can we claim that? His word says it. So how do we start our days? How many of you here have to have a cup of coffee before you get going? I applaud you, Ben. There's some some transparent, some honest people up here. What I like to call Jehovah's Java. Oh, he can transform people, right? He's going to use whatever he's got, and he can transform because it's all his, right? Even down to the coffee. What goes in, comes out. But how about before we do anything, Let's go to the creator that began it all. And let's start our day off with him. When you do, that atmosphere of creation allows him to manifest who he is in our lives, no matter what we're facing in the day, no matter where we've been, where we are, or where we're going, because he is who was and is to come. And that's important because it aligns us with what he wants to do with his plans, with his creation in our life. After all, he is our father in heaven. How many of you have a Bible app on your phone? If you know some going old school today with notes in the Bible, that's good. I have one too. But before you take a phone call, before you get on an email, before you check out the morning news, go to our father first. And if it's on a Bible app, make that the only call that you make first in the day. Call on our father in heaven. Get your vertical worship, that one-on-one going because he is the one he knows what the day holds Matthew six thirty three. seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you that's a great promise and blessing right there you seek him first you'll find him he's a reward of those who seek him diligently start there in the beginning he'll add all these things that we need so that's the beginning how many of you know that we plan things. We have calendars. We have all kinds of Excel spreadsheets. Anybody still use Excel spreadsheet? God wants you to excel in whatever you do. You believe that? But you don't have to have Excel 
as your application, just apply your time with him. Apply his word in your life. He'll exceed all that he wants you to be because the creator created us to be all that he wants us to be. And that's amazing. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Give him praise for that alone right there. So as we plan our future days, let's let him be the one that goes before us. Let's spend the time with him and let him take us where he wants us to go. Proverbs 16, 9, a, man plans, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Thank you, Jesus. As we walk through this journey in life, sometimes this can get in the way. This can get in the way. I've said it before, this is the most powerful battlefield on the planet right between here. Can we agree on that? So when we submit ourselves and let him have his way, he's going to direct our steps because his word says it. And as I mentioned, when Adam had sinned and the first man, God knew that he was going to have to send a savior. And I love this, the one. And it's based out of love, the agape kind of love. That's what our Father in Heaven has. It's unconditional love. Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died on the cross for us. Love is not a feeling or an emotion. It is a sacrifice. It's an action that's driven with passion, with purpose. In this case, for our future, for our hope. And aren't you thankful that Jesus left the comforts of heaven to come here on earth as our Savior and bring it to us so that we could be with him again one day? Thank you, Jesus, for that. And God knew that day was going to come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the only one, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The one. And he finished it on the cross. He did it out of love and he finished it on the cross. Gave us full access to our Father in heaven. Reconciled our relationship. God's about relationship. Jesus is the one who tore the veil, who allowed us to enter back in to the graces, the promises, the blessings of our Father in heaven. John 3, 17, I love to bring this up when we read John 3, 16. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But the world through him might be saved. That, world, that word condemn, the enemy wants you to feel unworthy. That you, you should not receive that. He wants condemnation to be on your mind, your thought. What are God's thoughts for us? Future and a hope, good, not evil. Align yourself with that. You're not going to win, devil. So more than a savior, he reconciled, he redeemed us, he bought us back, he purchased us, he came for us so that we could be with him again. But in the meantime, what are we doing with the time that God has given us? How do we honor him for what's been done for us, the ultimate sacrifice that he brings us into his fold? So as we plan our days to come, let's make sure we're allowing time in those plans each and every day for him. For the creator who created day and time. Who sent his son. Where is he on that calendar? Where is he in that daily walk? Where is he in that daily bread? John 10, 9 and 10 explains. This is Jesus' word. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And will go in and out. And find pasture. I don't know about you, but the in and out, our goings and comings. He's not talking about in and out of salvation. That's a done deal. It was finished on the cross. You're saved, you're saved. We're talking about this in the scripture going in and out. As a shepherd watches the sheep as they go through the door where the wolves are at bay, whatever's out there. But don't you love the fact as they come in and out of pasture, find yourself, step into God's space, God's grace. Be in that pasture as we come in and out and take that with you whenever we go because it's being blessed by the Lord as he watches us come and go the one who can give him praise he is our safety but it's simple what the enemy's plan is John 10 10 the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy that's his plan he wants to kill out our dreams kill out our joy, destroy it, 
squash it. Anything that's good that God has given us. And we have the right to as believers. He wants to get in the way of that and destroy it. Doesn't want us to have that kind of relationship. Doesn't want us. Let me tell you, if you feel that you're unworthy to receive Christ and God's mercy through him, you're wrong. That's not the thoughts that God has for you. That's not why he created us. That's not why he sent Jesus. Don't you think that you're unworthy? If you are, it ends today. That ends so something new can begin. And those of us who know the Lord, we're walking through it in joy and pain. We're going to face those trials and tribulations, but he's the one. He's the one that we can go to and bring whatever the need may be. He will show up. And he's coming back again. And there's going to be a new heaven, new earth. We're just in this time right now of humanity to where there's more to come. But God has given us in a relationship with him time. So don't condemn yourself and condemn others. Don't think that you're not worthy. Speaking of time, it's God's gift. I think we lose sight of that sometimes. He gave it to us to be good stewards of it. Can we agree on that? He's the one who holds it. It's all his. So when he gives us time, he's not a God that forces us to use it. However, he wants us to or that. It's how we respond with it as a steward. You're going to put your time somewhere. But we need to communicate with him. Even at sporting events. What do they do when things start going awry? Things aren't going well. What happens? Time out. Time out. We need to have a talk. We need to get back to the plan. We need to get back to what we showed up to do here. And let's go have a victory. When you take the time out of whatever's going on around you and you give it to God, get ready for victory. Amen. He overcame the world so that we could have that opportunity. He's the one in us. That's the one we need to bring wherever we go, whatever we do. And wherever you are in your job, oh, I just don't have time. Okay, my job's got me here and there. Just remember who gave you that job. May not be the one you want, but guess what? He's faithful and little will be given much. He's planted you there for a reason. Go with it with joy. Count it as a blessing. Go represent the kingdom. Amen. So my notes are getting a little out of control here, but that's okay. God's got this. Time is irreplaceable. There was a study done. I was watching a show uh, over the holiday break, and this group did a survey. And they asked, what would you give someone a non-material gift? In other words, you can't wrap it. It's not something you can actually give. But if you could, what would you give someone? Guess what was on the top of the list? Time. Time. Peace was on there, too. Close to it. Just in the amount of time that we've gathered here and worshiped and heard the words that we've already heard is in the past. We're in the present, and even saying that now, we're moving forward. It's God's time, Cairo's time, an appointed time. I love how the fact, who here ever gets distracted? Who distracted? Are there people who distract us? Are there things that distract us? Of course, right? It's a challenge. But I love the scripture, Luke 10, 38 through 42. Huh. It amazes me in the scripture where Mary, Sister Martha, friends of Jesus, he's in town. Hey, Jesus, come on in. We'd like to have you. Who here would invite somebody over, and while they're there, you don't spend time with them? You're in there cooking, or you're doing the dishes, or you're doing this and that. Y'all enjoying that out there? I'm glad you came over. I just don't have time, but I'm glad you're here. Oh, Jesus saw this, and he understood, and he showed it with compassion. We all find that from whatever we're facing, be it our health, be it our finances, be it our relationships, be it whatever it is. Sometimes that can be a distraction, and yet we ask Jesus to come in, and yet we don't give him the time. We don't sit at his feet. We don't let him be who he is and hand it off to him. Martha, Martha, Mary has found the good part. It's amazing. Man, Martha's calling him out, even calling Jesus out. Jesus, tell her to come help me. I've got these things to do, these chores. 
Well, let me just tell you, those are important to get done, but there's a bigger chore, and it's to go tell the one to those who need to hear it, to be the one, to go share it. His yoke is light. His, burden, his yoke is easy. His burden is light. So when we call on him, let's be confident, and let's let him apply his time to whatever situation we're facing, and he will show up. And I want to encourage us, too, as we do that, I'm going to read a verse here in a second. And I just want to encourage all of us that there's a time while we have it, how we use it. There's a time to forgive. There's a time to not judge. There's a time to give God what's his. Whatever we use it, it's going to be measured back to us. And I just want to carry the Holy Spirit's moving here. You need to take this time to tell somebody you love them. Mm. And somebody needs to hear this. Don't wait and forget to tell those around you that you love them because God so loved the world, he sent his only son. He is about love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Somebody needs to hear from you. Start with God and go from there. Somebody needs to give and receive forgiveness. Give it. Take the time to do that while you have the time. Let's look over at Luke 6, 36 through 38. On the back of your offering, there's Luke 6, 38. And this verse is used for that. But God has put in my heart over the last few years reading this. I've always encouraged you, go to a verse you're familiar with, read up, read down, read to the left, read to the right. It's going to take you places and it's going to show you the cross. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. We talked about starting off the day. His mercies are new every day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not. There's that word again. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He didn't walk around with a gavel saying, you sinner, you sinner, get it together. You, you, you. And the Pharisees rejected him. What they were looking for was there the whole time. Condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure you use it, it will be measured back to you. So beyond provision, it's forgiveness, not judging not feeling condemnation, not condemning others, using the time that we have, using the talents while we have the time, the way God wants us to. He's going to load us up with it. And let me just say this, that daily bread, Jesus came to give us life abundantly. Back to John 10, 10. Give it to him abundantly. He doesn't just give you a crumb from the bread of life. He gives you the whole loaf. And he knows the exact portion we need each and every day. Abundantly. I may not know what you've been through. You don't know some things I've been through, but I know the one who does. There comes a time when we need to come alongside each other and say, you know what? All I can do is bring the one into this. Be it by prayer, come alongside you, encourage you, remind you of his word, be there through love, be there through grace. And I'll share a testimony with you. By the way, I love testimonies. It does so many powerful things. It praises God verbally. It touches hearts. And it tells the enemy, you lose. Yes. Takes fear right out the window. Not today. Not today, devil. The fear, gone. I'm going to share what God's done in my life. Amen. My father didn't speak to me the last 13 years of his life. My earthly father. Married 20 plus years, four children. Left a broken home and some pain. He knew Jesus. But I didn't, I just wanted a thing to do with him. Almost didn't go to his funeral, but because I had a praying grandmother and a praying mother, reminded me that you should be here, if nothing else, out of respect for us. I'm glad I did it. But that bitter seed continued into my adulthood. He got into the world. The world took him away. That was his thing. And it just angered me. 20 plus years and finally my time with the Lord 
reminded me, you need to forgive him and move on. I used to have dreams of anger. That I just, uh, it was bad. Explain to my kids, your grandfather, they'd ask. And here's what happened. It helped me honor the time that I had with my father. He was a hard worker. He was a good man. He just went astray. And it also first honored my father in heaven that sent him to him, me to be the earthly father. We can't choose our parents. So I want to encourage you with that today. And let me encourage you with this. I didn't get a chance to tell my earthly father that I forgave him. But my heavenly father heard from me. If someone's not here and you've waited that long, go to your father first before you go ask forgiveness. If someone's here and you're going, go to your heavenly father first, and here's what happens. He's going to forgive you. It's going to put you in a posture, and the Holy Spirit's going to give you the words. In case it's not received by the other person, you're forgiven. Amen. The enemy wants you to think of, well, it wasn't received by the person, so you're not worthy. That's not what God's word says. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Amen. Judge, and I'll be judged. I'll see my father again in a place where there won't be any of that going on. There'll be love, restoration. Also, there comes a point where we've just got to go. We've got to go. Our plans, as we've talked about, there comes a point where we've just got to take what God has given us in this time as we spend time in his word, his prayer, let him lead the way, and it's time to go. Why would we hold to ourselves the one and that's as far as it goes in us and not share it with the world? That's our purpose. That's a future. We've received the future and the hope. Let's go give it to a world that needs to see a future and a hope. Let's be the one that shares him. Deuteronomy 31.8, before we set out on any journey. And by the way, you can't get out of park and go anywhere. Until you get out of park in your car, you can't go anywhere, right? Park starts with a P. Pray. Each and every time you get in that vehicle, pray. Look at that a little different now. Pray for your journey, for your safety, the safety around you. And I'm going to ask each one of you today, before you leave here, pray for yourself when you get in your car. Pray for others, as Christ did. And pray for this church. We're getting ready to build a kid's light building. You saw the announcements were on the move. Let's pray as a church family that God will continue to bring the right people. But more importantly, he'll manifest himself here. And we'll be a light on the hill right here in Willis, Texas. Let's do it together because there's power in prayer. And if you don't have a car, God's gifted you with feet. Or if you're not able to walk, he's given you a way to get around. However you can get to and from, pray. Pray before you go and watch what happens. And here's a blessing for us to claim as we go. Deuteronomy 31.8. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Do not fear. God didn't put us with the spirit of fear. And do not be dismayed. Give him glory for that. That's encouraging. Because whatever we set out to do, he goes before us knowing that he's going to do good works through us that believe in him. Ephesians 2.10. Let's take a look at that. As a creator of heaven created the heavens and the earth and created us, it gets better with Christ Jesus because now we become his workmanship. Mm. Thank you, Lord. We're his masterpiece. Look at somebody right now and say, hey, you're God's masterpiece. And you are. And as we follow our master, he's going to put us out there. I've always said this before. Ships weren't built to stay in harbor. They have a design There's to get out there no matter what the seas may do, the calm seas, fair winds and falling seas, the storms. God's designed us to get through that. There's a time to go and have the cargo that he sent us with. And there's a time to come back, rest and be re reloaded with what the next venture is. It works with us too. We are his vessels. 
Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We're on this journey to walk with him. Let's claim that promise. Let's be who we are with the one. And let's show that masterpiece to the world. And you know, here's the thing too. A lot of times the baggage has just got to go. Can we agree on that? Back to something has to end for something new to begin. I don't think I have to tell anybody in here, there's days, man, the, the day's been tough. It's been a tough day, been a tough month, week, year. It's been tough. But here's the good news. When you unload those burdens, Christ shows up each and every time. And when we commit our ways to him, here's what happens. And then we'll come back to Ephesians 4, 3 here in a second. Proverbs 16, 3, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. He's got thoughts for us. Commit your ways. And the word commit in the Strong's Dictionary means to roll, roll away, unload. So I find interesting on this illustration of a camel. You've seen a camel where it's loaded down with cargo, used for centuries to get cargo. When it's time to unload it, you don't just reach up and pull it. You don't push it off. The camel kneels down. Tilts and it falls off. How many times do we take our burdens, our cargo, our baggage that's holding us up to go where God wants us to? Are we getting on our knees? Are we kneeling down before the king? Coming into his presence and allowing him as we lean into him to take that off, to bring us back and be back to what we were designed to do. Chrissy, I'll tell you, she does a wonderful job when we travel with uh, packing. Here, who, how many of you here overpack? <laughs> Chrissy, did you raise your hand? Okay. <laughs> For years we travel. God bless my wife. She, she's what I call a space engineer. <laughs> and she uses a lot of it. She's gotten better. I mean, there's times heading out that you're thinking, okay, man, we're going to stop by the bank, pay for the airlines to get these baggages on, and we're going to hit every gas station along the way. We're loaded down. And that's why the airlines charge, because that plane is not designed to go over a certain weight. It's going to stress the structure. The fuel's not enough to get it. That's why they limit it, right? Same with us. We've gotten better, though. Miracles happen in our house. <laughs> Unloading that baggage or packing it. But here's the thing. Before you pack up anything, be it from the past, the present, or the future, let God be the one who packs for us. Let him put in there what he wants us to take with us, where we're going, who we're going to share it with, what we need when we get there. And I'm talking about just when you get up in the morning and go to your job or wherever you go, let him be the one. So Chrissy allows me now to have about that much um, in there and we've gotten better, but it's the same baggage, right? And how much can that apply to our lives too? Those around us, the relationship, we share that together. There's times that someone in our lives is going through something and they've loaded up the baggage. Instead of us criticizing it and condemning it, maybe we need to come alongside them and have a conversation and say, hey, I know the one that can, can help with that. I know the one that you can unload that on. I want to be there with you. Let me direct you to it. Paul had it right too. We're still going to come back to Ephesians here in just a second. You can't drive a car looking in the rearview mirror for it, right? Just not going to work. Of course, I had somebody tell me, well, if you're backing up, you can. True. You can't. You're gonna, that's where you're going to be going. But God wants us to continue to move forward. Paul had it right. Pressing towards the goal, and this is in Philippians 3, 12 through 14, not that I've already attained or have already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of what Christ Jesus 
has also laid hold of me. We're his. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing. I forget those things which are behind me and press forward or to those things which are ahead. I press forward to the goal of the prize of the upward call of Jesus Christ. The most important call you're ever going to answer in your life is that of accepting Christ. And from that point on, you can call on the name that's above all names. He'll respond. He'll meet you right where you are. So it's time. It's time to go. It's time to leave what's old and receive the new. Because God has plans for us of a future and a hope. And there's power in it when we come together. How many of you know that we can't just be the one on our own, right? There's power when we come together. When we come together, here's what happens. Ephesians 4, 3 through 7. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit of the bond of peace, there's one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. For the Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now for native Texan to say you all and not y'all, I'm just honoring God's word. That wasn't easy. We're going to honor it. So he's in us. He's in us all. So this morning we've talked about the gift of time. We've talked about how do we use it? As so I get ready to, to close here, I want to revisit God's time one more time. 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slacking concerning his promise, as some count slightness, but is long surfing towards us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. There's our call. There's our mission. We're the one. That God sent the one to be in us, to be the hands and the feet. He's not slack on his time. The time's him. And let me just tell you this. Only the Father in heaven knows the time that Jesus is going to return. Only him. So what are we doing with that time in the meantime before he returns? He's not slack. He wants everyone to come to know Christ, to know him, to be restored, to be reconciled, to repent, to have a relationship with God. So let's go, ambassadors of the kingdom. Let's go, disciples of the one who sent us, who's in us. Let's give them that. Let's bring heaven here on earth and do what we've been called to do. If you please stand. If you're here today and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's time. Now's the time. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. There's no guarantee on that. You're here for a reason. If you never see Christ, today's the day of salvation for you. He came for you. You be the one that receives him. And then you have access to all the promises and the blessings in a relationship with our Father in heaven. You become saved. Your, your life is eternal. If you've accepted Christ before, but you need to reconnect. You need to come back to the kingdom. Welcome back. Jesus is here. He's going to meet you right where you are, as you are. He's here. Come back. He's going to put his arms around you with love and grace and cover you with a blanket of love and redemption again. Just come on. Come back. Come back and walk with what we've been designed to do. Let's go.